yes, that is a Rick and Morty calendar, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Uh, what? It doesn't seem to like that line for some reason. It is clearly a GUID right there. But on the server, it's coming back null. Why would it, why would it be null? What could make that happen? So we've passed. I thought we passed GUID somewhere else, didn't we? We have not. We passed uh, GUID from the server to the client, and that seemed to be maybe maybe. How about <laughs> this? Let's make sure that we have that information correctly stored here. So let's just render it out and say um, state.id. And uh, let's fire this up really quick. Let's make sure this actually has a GUID. So if I go to table and game, and that is definitely a zero, but it should be at this point. But if I join the game, ooh. Did not get, am I not setting it? I bet I'm not setting it. All right, so when I join a game, uh, I see it, I see it. We join the game, um, we should be giving the GUID back to the player. The player has never received their unique identifier. Womp womp. So when we join the game, we want to return uh, GUID as the ID. Uh, let's be specific. Player ID needs to go there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. We never told the user what their ID is. So therefore, the user cannot tell us what their ID is. Okay. So when we join the game. We we'll go back to the game hub. Uh, when we join a game, and notice these are all lighting up, which is good. Um, we will. Is that red? Yes. It is. It should be because what we want here is the player dot ID, <laughs> and now it should satisfy it. The problem is when we create a table. Um, it doesn't have a GUID and it's using the same method to send information back to the table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just GUID, put a GUID in here. And eventually we can use that as the game's ID. Okay. So we'll say GUID dot new GUID and that'll make that happy. And even yeah. though we're not doing anything with it on the client, uh, we're just going to throw it away for now. We can always use it later. So we'll keep that the same. Um, and then on this line, we need to tell this method that we're getting a GUID back. And then we need to pass it along to that join game function. And when we call has joined, let's, before we do that, we'll say state.id. Uh, equals good equals ID like that. Okay. Now it has an ID. Now it should be happy. I don't think the table will blow up. I think it will just ignore the parameter as it comes across the wire. Let's just double check and see if there's an exception on this page. There is not. So now, hey, now. Now, when we join the game, this number should change. Boop. Now we have Yay! a GUID. Yes. We can start. Now Jack, Jack is on top. Draw. I saw this the bar. Thing, the scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We drew a card. We drew a 10. Do it again. Do it again. Yay! <laughs> yes. We're getting somewhere. Ah! Wait. Okay, so you keep talking about throwing away this um, GUID on the, what is it, the game ID? The table. 
the table ID. <laughs> what what do you want to do with it if you don't what what, what when do we have, have that you want to do? When we have multiple games, what we'll end up doing is taking the GUID for the the table and using that as the like the room, the okay. unique identifier. So for it's the only room. relevant if you have multiple though. Okay. I got you. Yeah. So at some point on this page, we'll have a user and another box to type in some type of game room. Right. Um, one thing we could probably do, I think these are unique enough that ugh, I was trying to at least show one. We could probably take like the last four digits, something like that, and use that to like yeah. uniquely identify the room. You could type in those last four digits and we could just search for a GUID with that last four digits. Do you think that's how Jackbox does it? It could be. These are unique enough. Like I said, it's not it's not security at its finest, right? Like we're not keeping out like uh, some uh, nation of hackers, but we're we're just kind of like grouping people together, and it's somewhat on the honor system. Um, the when when this is bad, when this is not something you want to do, and um, I think Zoom was doing something like this early on, and you could go in there and just like mash like GUIDs and like jump in and like crash people's Zoom meetings. Um, That's when this is bad. I see. Um, in the case of um, Jackbox games, you can go in there and mash in numbers and eventually join somebody's um, game, but you join as a spectator. Right. Right. So Unless, of course, you're just. The game hasn't started yet, but the window for that would yes. be. Yes. So, yeah. You'd have to really kind of like hit the lottery on that, but <laughs> it is possible. I've done it by accident and like <laughs> I've sat in there and like watched people play. And it's weird because you see their answers come up. And uh, I think you get an icon or something that shows that people are watching. So they yeah. got kind of creeped out and they quit in the middle of the game. <laughs> so well, I, got I, did it, I did it once by accident. So <laughs> it's not something I make a habit of. It's just happened. But anyway. Oh, that's, that's cool. So, okay. Drawing works. Although technically you only tested it with one user, but I will trust you that it will work with other users. Yeah. <laughs> um we could we can test that really quick i think we're fine because it is using that group so it's using the group so you should never get like a conflict I just, there i was just wondering if like everyone gets the card or you know just this fella yeah we could test that but i'm i'm pretty certain that uh that we're not yeah Yay! there's only five oh, um, so excited. for future sanity sake let's add to this a little bit so game.razor let's take out the id because we know the id works and instead let's say state.cards or no hand i'm sorry it's hand here oh the number count nice we'll drop the count nice and um, then um the next thing would be to add a, a button for play. So select and play. Yes. So we need to be able to select a card and play a card. Do you think we can so do it in 40, 40 minutes? We shall try. <laughs> so we need to, let's dump all this again and go back to our solution. And we need to look at our playing card. And here we are going to ditch the logic for flipping the card over and replace it with something else. So in Blazor, what we need is uh, this needs to bubble an event and let uh, the user know that we are selecting a card. So what we'll do here is say, um, I have shortcuts that are published as a um, install that uh, do this. So when I typed para EC, it created this method for me. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that is broken in Visual Studio and it's not something that everybody can install anymore. So don't get mad at me, it doesn't work. Um, so we'll do something called an event callback. This is basically bubbling up from our component to the, um, the UI mm -hmm. saying that an event has taken place. Um, we're going to take this on click event handler and we're going to publish it as a event callback for blazer to consume. Uh, what this will do is say, uh, to blazer, somebody clicked on an event 
you're going to handle it and then re-render that component. Because if we don't use event callback, it won't know that a change has happened and it won't do anything. It'll do the code, but it won't update the UI. So event callback handles that for us. Okay. Um, and an event callback, we can tell it uh, what the event argument was. So for our case, I think we want to send the card back is the event argument. And we'll say um, uh, card selected like that. Uh, so then we, this is the event that we subscribe to. We actually need to bubble the event up. So we're going to click, uh, let's actually move this. Uh, nah, let's not move it. Uh, we'll just scroll down a bit. Maybe we could collapse these, get this out of our way so we could see a little better. Mm -hmm. So we have the handle click, uh, we want the handle click to, uh, trigger that callback, uh, or the event, I mean, so we'll it's, say on click of. The card, card selected dot invoke async. Um, and then we need to give it the card. Uh, so uh, we'll pass in card. Um, yeah, we'll pass it card. And that makes it happy. So if we follow this, let's move this up so you can see better. Ah, put the event right underneath that. Uh, so when I, when I see the card on the screen, I click this event handler on click yeah, on the yeah. div. So handle click gets triggered. Handle click says, um, to invoke this event callback. And now the user has specified how they're going to handle that event callback. So if we go to our, uh, game, um, and we look at our playing card. We can say on card selected. David Pine wants to know, should your handle click be task returning? Otherwise it's fire and forget. Should handle click. Oh, that actually might be true. Let's go ahead and cover our bases. I don't remember if it needs to be task in here or not uh no it doesn't have to be it i doesn't? don't believe no okay i don't think it does if something goes awry we'll go back and check but i don't think it does so now in our game we can handle this card being selected we're going to get a card back remember so we need to go into the code for it and do something with it. Uh, so card selected, that's what I want to call it anyway. Well, we have a lot of methods going on in here. <laughs> um, uh, this one, I, I don't think that's necessary. I still don't think that's necessary. Um, because I think it's bundled in it's invoking i don't know i i don't think we have to do that but we'll we'll double check here in a minute uh because blazer that's why um we want to select that thing so we'll start with void here and say selected card all right let's call it handle selected card i like that better handle the selected card. Remember that um, that event callback gives us a card. So we'll have the card as an argument. And then we need to do something here. Let's set up in the client game state. This would be a, probably a decent place for it. Public um, selected, oh, sorry, card. Selected card. There's kind of a mishmash of state going on here that I don't really care for. It needs to be refactored. This is all game specific so far, which is fine. And then there's a bunch of state type of things going on in here that are UI, I guess, related. Um, so there's 
some things that could probably be fixed up a little bit. Uh, I understand Blazor allows either void or task on click handlers. But since you're calling it async method .net general practice, yeah, I think it just I think it just um, in Blazor it handles that for you. You can put void; it doesn't care. But yeah, if you're doing any other kind of code, uh, let's see here. Um, we want to uh, say selected card. Nope. State dot selected card equals card, and we will do. Uh, we don't need a state has changed here because it's an event callback. So we just need to tell this to handle that and no underscores there. So this, um, you could see it right here. It's uh, giving us a card and this method satisfies that uh, signature because it accepts a card and then we're gonna set it to the state and then in the game, uh, we can go up here and simply say span dot selected card and we'll just write it out right there. Let's try that. Because blazer. <laughs> All right. So we'll table game. Uh we'll join the game and we'll start the game. And we have five cards and we'll draw a card and we'll tap a card and we've selected the eight of clubs the four of clubs six of clubs or diamonds nice. whatever that is nice so we're we're clicking <laughs> Yay! now we'd probably want to add some sort of logic in here to like highlight the card or something like that um we would need to don't threaten us david <laughs> <laughs> Just so people on um, other channels can see what notice, we're doing. Notice the, the important thing that really matters here, David, is it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked. Uh, we could... I don't, I don't think I've ever actually done this, but I think, you, like, to Dave's point, I think you could say task, and then it's... And then what, it's return? No, that's not going to fly. Is it just... <laughs> It, it wants to be not all code paths return a value and you can't return this. <laughs> it doesn't have a return value from it. It doesn't let me return it. <laughs> oh, there it did. It finally, it finally woke up and, and let me do that. Let's see. Hang on a second. Let's try this again. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. We'll join a game, start a game, select a card. Hey, it still works. Was it any faster? Can anybody tell? I'm just wondering. Are you talking about when you no. select the card? Yeah, I was just teasing. I was gonna do it a hard time. You can you can do it that way. I, I'm pretty sure like if you look at the docs, it does it it just says void and just invokes async. Um I don't think there's a thread that you're actually like returning anything to, so it doesn't care. There's a lot of places in blazor where you can use void and in no other place in .NET you use void and people don't scream at you uh, because it will cause problems in other stacks blazor is an exception to the rule because it's blazor and it runs in WebAssembly and it's in the browser and it's special and coveted <laughs> all right anyway we, we selected a card. I think that's the main point is we have a card we selected. We can do some like fancy stuff to like highlight the um, the item later. Um, it's kind of tricky with this um, for each and uh, the hand here, we'd have to go in the loop and say like, if this is the selected one, then tell it it's the selected one and then go to the playing card and say update oh, the css we already moved that yeah. logic out to yeah. a system 
file. We would go over to our sys file and we would be like, is selected equals this card is blah, blah, right? And then you'd make yeah. first card card. I have a book, a free ebook that would explain like all the steps to do that um, on our website on telerc.com. You've been holding out, so if Ed. You go to telerc.com <laughs> slash white papers. There is, uh, do, there's a lot more free ebooks. Let's do this free laser <laughs> ebook. It's been a, it's been a couple iterations. And so, there's a uh, lot. You, uh, <laughs> we've got somebody, uh, some very thirsty competitor poaching our keywords. So scroll past all of those annoying people and then sign up for the ebook. And yeah. there will be an example in the ebook on uh on how to do like a list with a selected item that highlights and all that fun stuff okay. so for now let's move on so we want to keep focus on some signal r stuff we've done a lot of blazer and ui stuff over the last two Very years nice. i'm going to post um, it to all the channels not just twitch so you're going to see that a bunch of times but there we go cool so we want in our game let's close the other tabs Close all but this. I love how every every IDE uses a different terminology for close all tabs, close all others, close all but this. Just make it hard on us. Um, so what we should do is um, we need a button, another button. Dolls. Um, because we don't have enough buttons yet. I didn't so. I mean, we've got one button. Well, how many? Let's put it up at the top here and say if, and we'll say state uh, select a card um, is not null. Good lord! Can't you just say if state dot select a card? No. <laughs> because selected card <laughs> is an object, and an object is neither true or false. Unless you're in JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if I, yeah. No truthy checks in .NET. So we just check to see if it's null or not. Okay. Um, Wait, why are you checking if it's, if it's null? Don't you want to check to see if it... Because we don't want to put a button on the page. Populate. Actually, let's do this instead. Instead of checking to see if it's null there, we'll say... Um, the disabled state is equal to um, state dot select a card. You take is, that back, Kevin. If Crick. it's disabled, if it if it <laughs> is null, then it's disabled. Them's fighting words. <laughs> okay. So if it's null, then we'll disable the button. And we'll say play. Okay, hang on. Button disabled equals state that select card is is null. Wait. Oh, so you're if turning it off. If, if it's, it's null, it's disabled. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's if a double the negative button... there that's throwing me. I'm with you. We can do it. <laughs> yeah, it's it it's. Uh, do not show. Re it's you... reverse log reverse okay, logic. Okay, I gotta get it. Um, actually, this probably needs to go down to here. David is asking if you can use, I think the word is. Is null. Um, they, don't they actually have two different meanings to? Oh, come now. You can do don't is null. To me. <laughs> um, they added some C Sharpie 9 stuff too. And you can do is not null, I think now. So that's that's new. Instead of bang, you can use not. But you think we can use is here? Is null. I think so. I think that works fine. Cool. Um, can we so see the we're... the button that shows up? We can. So the button won't do anything, but we can see it. So if we go to game, uh, there's no button yet because we haven't joined. He's or using started. laser mad mark, but I don't and know. See how you're asking. see how it is dark. It is disabled. We'll click, and now we can play the Four of Hearts, but we don't have anything hooked up to play, so it's not doing anything. But no, but 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 can you click off of four, or is it not like that? 
No, we don't have a way to clear it yet. Do we want a way to clear it? Um, maybe at some point. Okay. Anyway. What we could do here, let's what, what? let's add a clear. We'll add a clear really quick. We'll do a very fast, ugly, dirty way of doing this. So if we click on the card, where's where's the method? Handle select. So we'll do this. If uh, state dot select card is equal to card, then state dot select a card is null. Um, And that should toggle it. If we select the same card twice, it should just deselect it. Ah. Right? Ah. Does that make sense? So if I go to my game, I say player one, start the game, I select my 10, I select 10 again, and I select 10, nice. I select 10 again. Boop, boop, okay, boop, that's boop. perfect. Um, so that's but now that you press play, what happens? Uh, we can't, it does nothing. It's not hooked to anything. So I'm saying now, what do we want to happen? So we want to click it. So we need to on click equals. Oh, I just, I thought of something else we're not doing. I'll get to it in a second. Uh, we need to set up a method, play card. And, um, in here we need we have all we have a lot of functions in here. We need to refactor this so bad. I want to so bad, and there's just no time. Uh, void play. Or I'm just picking a random spot, by the way. There's no rhyme or reason to this. Um, we're gonna go off the state, so we're not gonna pass anything in, and we're gonna do uh, a hub connection. Um, this needs to be task task uh play card well these all fit into an arrow why wouldn't this one <laughs> say hub connection send async um play card and we're going to pass it the state dot id and the state dot selected card and everybody's happy cool did you make it disappear? Not yet. Oh, good point. So this now has to become an await, right? Await task. Do do. This guy. And then. Um, actually, let's keep it this way. What were let's, you pondering? Changing? Let's do some validation here and say, okay, uh, we're gonna play the card and we're not gonna dis we're not gonna take away the selected card yet. Let's let the server tell us it got the message. And then okay. we'll we'll remove the, the played card after it's successful. Okay. Is that better? Yes, but how are you going to do so, my good sir? So we'll tell we'll tell the hub that we're playing a card. The card will uh, the hub will update its state, and then it will send us a message back that say the card was successfully played. Then we'll go back and deselect that card from because we we act, we need to take that out of their hand. Also, do you have a a discard pile created on on the state yes. or that you do no, have that already? We don't. So we need, we got some work. We's got some work to do. We got 20 minutes to do it. Let's move. Let's move fast. Let's uh, we're going to play the card. That's what my mother-in-law always says. She's so cute. We let's, need the hub. Let's bug, Shug. <laughs> we need the hub. We need the game. Um, we need to create a, uh, we have draw, public, async, task, play card. And then we're going to get a GUID of an ID and we're going to get a card card and uh, we then need to do several things right we need state dot 
uh, layer. Um, this is something we could probably refactor out instead of copy. I'm going to copy it for um, lack of time. What I would do is create a convenience method that grabs that ID all the time. Um, let's do a state the uh, player dot hand remove um, we can try it like this but I have a feeling it's not going to work why because the equality comparison it's going to do if Dave, Dave you would know if you're still there if I call remove on a list and the two objects are identical but they are not the same instance is it going to find it and remove it or does it have to be the exact instance reference so I'm going to have to probably find it by name and then remove it he said this is what you why you'd want a record type yes we do probably want to put that as a record type but we don't have record types right now so this isn't going to work i don't if understand I'm, if i'm right it work. it's because you're saying it doesn't know how to find it so if i did var a equals um new card uh card value is an ace card suit is clubs and i duplicate that and i say b a and b are not equal did i break you uh, i'm just so a does not equal b if what you're saying which I what I think you're saying is that the way the identifier we have right now doesn't work for this, then why can't we just use index or something else to Yeah, we we have to go in the hand, find the find the card with the same values and then get a reference to it. Because what's happening here is even though they're the same values, they're not the same reference. They are two completely different cards with the same values to to dot net. And that's what's gonna happen here is we're passing a card from the client uh up to the hub and that card is not the same reference as the one that is in the hand or in the um in the server's state what? so they're two they have the same values they are not the same card so we gotta say uh for player um card equals card or equals uh state dot um uh, players dot and no, player dot players play ah, dang it i already have player layer I'm trying to rush now hand dot uh find the card where the card value equals card dot value that should be a double equals and the card oops and also card dot suit equals did i reverse that i did i'm gonna make people really upset <laughs> card dot suit i want this one so i'm gonna find the player's card in their hand yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the state, or no, the player again. Player. Dot hand. Then I can call remove. And then I can call the player card. Well, it'd be nice. Um, I need, I should reach out to Dave again. Hint, hint. He's in the chat room. We should do another show sometime where we re refactor this and put records in and then see what code can get dropped out of this with records. That would be a fun stream to do hmm. um he said yes you you <laughs> saw it let's do it uh let's see here so player hand remove we're going to remove it from the hand there's a couple things we need to do um remove it remove card hand 
We need to remove the card from the player's hand. We need to add it to the draw pile and yeah, add to discard. A oh yeah, discard and then make a discard on the state inside of the yeah something object. And then we need to notify success. What? So we need to after we're done, we'll tell we'll tell the player that the operation was successful. They'll need to remove it from their state in their hand and then remove it from their selected item. Oh, see, I assume that's what you meant by remove card from hand. Uh, the servers got um, the servers got memory of all the players and all the hands. Gotcha. Okay. So we're talking. I, I this gotcha. would be so if if I accidentally closed my tab, we we haven't built this in yet, but we've opened up the possibility for if the player accidentally closes their tab, they can uh, rejoin the game in progress. And then the server will have all of the player's hands. So it can go, oh, here's what you had in your hand and just serve it back. Um, if we didn't keep all of the player's hands, then we'd never be able to rejoin. So we have to keep it somewhere. Um, what we'll do is this, this GUID that we keep using, we'll, we'll use, um, we'll use uh, browser storage local storage to save local that storage. so if i close all my tabs i still have it in local storage and then when i reopen a tab i can look for that guid and then i can send the guid up to the server the server pulls my hand and gives me a hand back uh so we need discard we need a discard state we don't have a discard state we have um we have a deck but we need uh public does it do we I, i'm gonna go with just a card for now i don't think we need a whole discard pile right? uh are you talking about a discard pile Is that what yeah you're we don't we just need the last one because we're not digging through these like there's just going to be the last one to show ever? crazy eights you know. never you never need your discard in crazy eights i assume not no they're so just shown it's just so for now we can just use that if some okay. other game were to be made then they could, could put their own the discards. thing okay. together what, what you'd probably do is say um give me an i game state and just have a different game state altogether, and it would have some commonalities uh anyhow cool. so latest disc or last discard uh we need to update that value in our game hub so we'll remove it. We'll say um, state dot discard equals card. Blip. That goes on the stack. It will replace anything that is there already. And then we will go back and notify wait. Uh, client dot. We could use caller here, I think. Dot. Mm -hmm. clients caller um nice. and then we need to create some method there so it will be like card played uh, or what discarded card we have play card but only if you add two more it e's. should be i want to discard yeah, it, it should have been card. played card well, no, it's asking it to play the card, so. It's not, it's this? already played this the card, card right? Played. At this point, it's ha. just updating I'll the I'll do them client. both. <laughs> <laughs> Discard played, good Lord. All right, fine. We <laughs> did it, we named it. <laughs> Don't you need a semicolon? Uh, yes, we also need uh, to tell the client um, trying to think should yeah we'll just leave it we could validate and just send them back uh well we might as well just send it back we'll just send back the card just in case just do some extra validation there and then we need to add this to our interface so it lights up and we could say um 
this card played. That's what we called it, right? Also, very soon we'll have the drawing. So I'm pretty sure this is mm -hmm. around the last chance to this card played for prices. Really want to get this part done. I oh, think you will. We'll be. You will. We could say this is a success if we can do this. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, we're missing something. We're missing something. What? Um, we need to notify um, the uh, the table. Table. We need to notify the table that a discard was played. Let's use the same method call. Why does the table care? Why does the table care? Come on. The Got table. <laughs> the table needs to draw the discard pile. So we got to tell the table to update its discard pile. Well, we also need to tell the table that whenever the draw pile you, is being emptied. Couldn't you just like fire off an event whenever last discarded is set or something? No. Um, where we could call uh, on. Yeah, this is this is the way I think we are, we need to do it. So the client of table needs to be um, discarded, and I guess the I was caller just needs to know this variable of last discarded like being bound to the table and like just any time it changes it it changes is, is what i had envisioned but on the table state it will be but we're on the server now okay. so the client doesn't know anything about what's happening in the server state right so we're gonna have to notify <laughs> the client that it needs to update okay so the latest card in the server is updated um Played. clients and then we also need to go back here we're not doing any table work so the player joins the game the game gets started we notify all the players that the game has started we haven't notified the table of anything um we need to do that too so let's await client dot table or no that group uh, table and let's um, we need to do a game started with the table too but we also need to tell it so um, like we're asking if we can use task dot when all to await both of them possibly uh, we we could refactor those task things later let's just yeah. get it done um, so the table, um, we need to make a method for it. Let's overload the game started with, um, let's do, we, we want the state dot deck dot count. Because we want the number of cards in the deck. Um, oh, we're missing something else too. We need to do a state dot deck dot pop, and we need to send that card down to. Actually, this needs to be. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry. Um, we need var. Or no, state dot uh, last discard equals, and we need to pop the uh, the next card off and throw it in the discard pile when we start a game, because the game has to start with a card discarded, and then we can take that discard and we can send that down to the table as well. Okay. So the table is going to get two values. We need to go back to iHub. And we need to duplicate the game started. And we can say this one has the uh, an integer of um, deck count and then a card, which is disc 
card. card. Right? Then we go back and we have um, that method is happy. That is happy. Now we need to go to the clients and on the client game, uh, we need to get back the disc the successful discard. So it will be, uh, we're gonna get a card back again and this one is going to be discard played and discard played and we need an event for that discard played. I know we're running close on time here. Almost perfect though. I think we have a playable game here in a second. Discard played card and um, we need to set state dot uh, select a card is null. We'll nullify that and we'll say um, state dot hand. And here's where we have to do that annoying find thing again. Mm -hmm. And we have to find a card. Uh, let's see, what was that on the server? It's the exact same thing. We're gonna have to do that here again. And actually I should have copied the other line because we're gonna remove it as well. Remove it. Um, take that we'll yank it out of the hand and then we will do a state has changed which will remove everything from the hand it will like tell our uh, um all of our data bindings on our ui to change and then why is that lighting up it does not exist in the current context played So we're good there. We need to go back real quick to the table and the table needs to do a few things. Um, so I'm just gonna use the duplicate function again. Uh, this is gonna get an integer and a card. And this is going to run the game started method. So we need to build game started. And we also need uh, a card. And this one is going to be uh, discard played. And we'll call that discard played. Um, we have no placeholders for these things yet. So there, there was never a table state created. So we'll do it kind of in line here because we've got like just two minutes or something to do this. Um, we need a card of discard a card and a um, an integer of deck count. And up here, we have uh, deck dot count. Where did deck dot count come from? Where's Where did it deck come from? Count? Yeah. Oh, because we were just creating a, a deck here. We can remove that. Uh, that was just like prototyping stuff. So we've got uh, deck count, and then the discard pile is going to render um, the discarded card. And then there's another variable in here that was just a placeholder we can get rid of. Single card goes away, blip, it's gone. Now we need to hook up the events, and we will say delayed. Uh, game started, which accepts an integer 
of count, uh, count, and a card of discarded card, and that gets the state set for us. Card count equals count. I don't know if that's yeah, let's um, let's shorten this up so we don't have a conflict here. We could use this, but that that's just annoying. So we'll just make it simple. Count. And, or was it deck count? So I didn't need to rename it. Oh, well. <laughs> Trying to speed this along, uh, and then discarded card equals card, and state. State has changed. There we go. Then we have one more, um, one more method, and then we can test it. And if it works, we've we've done our job. <laughs> so discard played. <laughs> is going to discard the card, set it to card, state has changed. And it all lit up fine. So let's <laughs> run this. Did we do it? Did I get them all? That was like fast. That was, that was like three so minutes. so fast. That was like speed. <sighs> I'm, in, I'm exhausted. Close all other tabs. Table comes up. And exception throws. Um... Okay, come on. If there were no errors, it's got to be a null reference. How ridiculous would that have been? <laughs> I bet it's a null reference exception. <laughs> on handle, no null reference on get value. Um, I think I know what it is. So we'll just set some defaults and this should fix itself. So card equals new. Um, actually, let's do th this. Um, if, I think it's here. If discarded card is null, then um, we'll just say span uh, game not started. I know that's like an ugly UI, but... No, it's fine. For but... like two two minutes of coding left, that's that's what we're getting. That's you get what you pay for, folks. <laughs> um, I think that's it. The other one that could be something of a problem, we'll just say deck count is. Uh, we'll start at fifty two. We'll say fifty two out of the gates. Fifty two cards, please. And uh, we'll say table. And there there are null reference went away. Game is not started. Yay! That's where that error was. Uh, we'll join Ed. Um, we will join Alyssa. Uh, Ed and Alyssa will play. Come on, snap, <laughs> snap! Heroes, they kill me. You unruly fool! Snap! <laughs> you fool! I don't uh, know if you've ever seen that video. Fools. Oh, that's not what you're quoting. Never mind. Have you ever seen the um, Gilbert Godfrey on um, no. Hollywood Squares clip? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to watch that. Okay, <laughs> start game. Uh, so it discarded a three. We have 41. We have Ed and Alyssa. Um, I'm going to draw a card. I have six cards. I'm going to discard the Four of Hearts. <gasps> the Four of Hearts landed. We did it. <laughs> we did it. You're amazing, Ed. Ah, I'm exhausted, God. but we did wow. it. With was... one minute to spare, let's give away prizes. Prizes! <laughs> okay, are you ready? The prizes for the final day of the stream. Salt Burnham 313, Guppy 1, and Andre Vivier, who's not on Twitch. You all and every winner from this week will be receiving Amazon gift cards via your email sometime, probably tonight um, or tomorrow morning. So congratulations, winners. Congratulations, Ed. <laughs> and a special shout out and thanks just to Ed and every single one of our guests who came on this week to teach me. I feel very honored and very humbled um, 
by what you were able to accomplish. It was beautiful. So thank you so much. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say I see a bug. <laughs> when we draw a card, we're not updating the pile. Updating the pile. Uh... That's an easy fix. I will fix that and I will push that to GitHub. Push up How the codes. Right, Do you want to I... put the uh, GitHub URL yep. in real quick? I'm pasting that and in right now. So I will fix is... that. The GitHubs, check it out. Ed will update it and we'll probably do a refactoring stream with uh, David, correct? So, yep. yep. I have Just, to run. Uh, I am on baby duty now. My husband has a meeting right at this hour. So, I'm hopping off, but you can do a longer sign off if you want. But thank, thank you, everyone. You. <laughs> um, when will refactoring with David Pine happen? And thank you, Alyssa. That was amazing. Thanks for joining me all week. Um, so this is something I just threw out there during the stream, so I don't have a schedule yet. Uh, we will announce that sometime. Follow us on Twitter. Follow Dave and I on Twitter. Um, I think Dave Pine goes by the same name he does here on Twitch, as do I. It's down at the bottom of my face. So follow us. Oops, wrong one. Follow us on Twitter. Um, you'll see us tweet about it. Um, if you registered to win a prize, I'm not 100% sure, but I think we might have an email in there. We could always email people and let them know that we're going to do a follow-up stream. So that is a possibility as well. But then just smash the follow button here on Twitch and just watch all the streams and you'll never miss it. How about that? Um, I'm exhausted. I'm going to see real quick if I can fix that last bug and then I'm going to push this up to GitHub. Um, the bug is when the player draws a card and there is no update to the table. So on draw card, I need to tell await uh, the table clients.group and table. Um, and then I need to tell the table to update the card count. So let's just call it as it is. We can say update card count. Um, and then we're going to pass it the state uh, deck count. If we didn't want to type state deck count all the time, we could just create a property on state that has that count. That's something that Dave and I can talk about sometime soon. Uh, now I'm going to go back up to the iHub here, and I need to create a task of update. Um, how did I name that? How did I name that? Where... Game, yeah, game hub. Uh, it should be underscored. Where'd it go? Update card count. Put that in my clipboard. Update card count. Uh, we will say int uh, deck count. Um, I'm going to say update deck count. That's a little more explicit. Go back here again. Fix this. Update deck count. Um, and then on the table, we need a method that takes an integer and is going to take the command update deck count, pass that down. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and just copy any method just so we get the state has changed. We don't have to type update deck count, uh, integer, and count. And now we can say deck count here. And we'll control F5. Then when we draw cards, we should be updating the table in real time. Once you get these things going, they're pretty fast to go ahead and just smash some code out. So we'll join a game. I only need one player really to test this. We know that the independent players are working. So we'll say join the game player one, start the game, draw a card, 
Draw a card, draw a card, draw a card. We're illegally just drawing cards, and the deck is counting down. We got it. Yeah, it was. It was bugging me. Um, so let's go ahead and push this up to GitHub. Um, I'll do that off air. It's a boring process, but uh, I'll do that right now. And then uh, Alyssa tweeted out the GitHub. Uh, so check that in about five minutes or less. And if you want to play with that code, it should be up there. I'm going to go, I'm going to hit push on this GitHub repo and go grab some lunch. So I will catch you all later. Uh, let's do a quick check and see if there's anybody streaming I can raid. We've got InstaFluff. Let's go ahead and raid InstaFluff and uh, just say hello. You all have an excellent weekend and I will see you next week on uh, the Code It Live channel. Thank you all for joining me. We had an amazing audience, by the way. All the Microsoft folks that stopped by um, and all of the fans of our stream, thank you so much. Um, it was uh, wonderful to have you all help us with the code today. Take care.